That's those little antelope that you can see there, and they're with some impala, and we're going to swing all the way around to the right-hand side now and show you just behind, hiding behind a little tree over there, is a giraffe. Can you believe that? And as I sneak slowly, look at him, he's hiding from you all, he's quite shy. And as I sneak slowly forward, I'm going to show you some zebra, and then we're going to go quickly down to look at the elephants. There, look at the zebra. Those big stripy bottoms you can see walking away from us. Wonderful. Now let's move down and have a look at these magnificent elephants. Just going to try and get us into the best possible position. I think this will be a good one here. There we go. Look how many there are. They're all having a drink today. And that's because it's quite a nice warm day. It's probably round about, I'd say, 78 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Maybe as high as 80 degrees Fahrenheit today. Which, remember, we're in the early parts of winter. So we don't have a cold winter at all down here. We're in South Africa, of course. And that, of course, is in the southern parts of Africa. So it is, I'm just getting confirmation there, 78 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 26 degrees Celsius, which is what just about everybody except in America uses to measure the temperature. What a beautiful herd of elephants this is. And the little ones might think about lying down in the mud. They love to play in the mud, just like young people like to play in the mud. Well, I used to like to play in the mud. I'm not sure if you guys do. Maybe in the summertime. Isn't that sweet? They're all drinking water and they've been eating all day long. Elephants like this have to spend a huge amount of time trying to find enough food to make themselves full because they are huge. The really big ones will weigh more than 14,000 pounds or 6,000 kilograms. And the little ones, you know how big they are when they're born? They're born 220 pounds. Can you believe that? 100 kilograms, that's what they weigh when they're born. Now, most of you will never get to that. Even, Charlie, you wanted to know how much they weigh, so there you go. And you will, n very few of you will ever get as heavy as 220 pounds or 100 kilograms. If you do, you'll be a pretty big person. Ah, and there's some of them now, you can see there, oh dear, one of them seems to be making a poop in his own water, which is not an ideal situation. But there are more and more of them coming down here to drink, and the little one there you can see almost having a bit of a swim. That water will be nice and cool on their skin. They'll really enjoy the feeling, and that's the young bull that you can see right in the front there. And the young bulls, well, you know, some of the boys in your class and the girls, actually, when you get to about 12 or 13 years, you're going to want to spend a bit more time away from your families. And that's what that guy's doing, because they feel very confident and they want some independence. And then, look, now they're starting to have a lovely swim. And Mario, you want to know if the elephants can see us. Yes, they can definitely see us. But they're not afraid of us, and we're not afraid of them because we see them often, and we see them often, and so they know that we are not uh, to be afraid of. They know that they don't have anything to fear from us. What I'm going to try and do is just move slightly so that we can get a slightly better angle on those ones there. We're going to drive just around the corner here, which will be very nice. And then after we've finished with the elephants, we'll go and have a look for those zebra and the giraffe and all the other wonderful creatures that we've got around here. You know, we don't always start off a safari like this. Sometimes we don't see anything for a long time. But today we're very, very lucky. I'm just going to drive around the corner into a little gap here. And although they can see us, and although I say that they are not threatened by us, we must have extreme respect for them. We need to respect them very much. And we do that by keeping our distance, by watching how we affect them. It's just like when somebody, or when you make somebody uncomfortable, or when you feel uncomfortable, you say, go away to them. An elephant does that, but not with words. They do that with their body language. 
going to just stop here now. That's a beautiful picture there. How's that, Ferg? <laughs> now, Lulu, you want to know how tall they are. The answer is much taller than me. It depends, really, on how old they are. The big ones, so that big cow at the far left-hand side there, she probably at her shoulder, that's actually a bull, but he probably stands at his shoulder about 10 feet tall. So a big bull about 10 feet, sometimes even more than that. But the little ones, not so much. I mean, when they're born, they probably stand about oh, two and a half to three feet at the shoulder, maybe three feet. Look at them having a wonderful swimming time there. Isn't that fun? And Kyle, oh, look at them playing there. They're playing dunk. Kyle, you want to know how much they drink every day. Well, Kyle, they drink quite a lot, you know. They drink roughly 100 litres a day for a 10-year-old cow. So a very big bull, which weighs 14,000 uh, pounds, is going to eat a lot more than that. He's probably going to drink, sorry, drink a lot more than that. He's probably going to drink up to 200 litres a day, which in pints, well, I mean, they can't work that out in pints, really. But I can work it out in gallons, actually. So it's 10 times 4, 400 gallons or so. That's a lot, hey? 100 litres, 400 gallons? No, I'm talking rubbish. Hang on, I'll work it out for you in gallons. Divide by 5, multiply by 4. 20 gallons. 20 gallons of water for a 10-year-old cow. Yeah, Harper, you ask a very good question, and it's a good question because, of course, we are people, and we know that as people, we can be very damaging to the environment. And you say to us here, do the elephants have any enemies? And the answer is absolutely they do, and their main enemy is man. We are their worst enemies. But luckily, out here, they're not harmed by us at all. They're very safe, and so we don't worry about that too much here. Out here, I suppose their only real enemies would be something like lions. But it would have to be an enormous pride of lions to hurt elephants like this. And maybe a very small elephant could be attacked by a hyena, but again, that would be very unusual. This is just wonderful. Look at them having a best time. Taylor, you want to know what girl elephants are called? Well, the same as girl cattle, the same as girl whales even, the same as girl crocodiles. They're called cows. Girl elephants are called cows, and boy elephants are called bulls. Isn't this fun? We don't see this every day, everyone. This is very special to watch them swim like this. Justin, you say do they play games? They do play games, Justin, but those games that they play are very different from the games you might play in the pool. You might play that funny game I used to play called Marco Polo, for example, or Hide and Seek, or that sort of thing. And they don't play games like that, but they do play with each other. And this is a game that's going on here. This is not serious behavior. And just about all mammals and some birds engage in what we call playing behavior. So you know you guys like to play, and you also know that you like to play a lot more than, say, your parents do. And that's totally normal, and that's exactly like these elephants. They, too, like to play a lot more than the older ones do. And we think there are a number of reasons for that, and I know some of you are studying adaptations at the moment. We think that play behavior is an adaptation that helps to sort out what we call the social hierarchy. So it tells us who's the boss eventually, and who's, or who's going to be the boss, and who isn't going to be a boss, and who's going to have a lot of friends, and who isn't going to have a lot of friends, that sort of thing. And it also helps us to develop our muscles. And we know, especially in human society, because we spend a lot of time indoors on our bottoms, doing a lot of things like writing and sometimes playing on computers and watching TV, our muscles don't develop quite as well as they used to. And so this play behavior that we engage in is just as important as it is for the elephants. That's why the elephants are doing it, is to make their muscles strong so that they can grow up healthily.
This is very special, everyone. We don't always have time like this with elephants. And that one that you're looking at there, or the one you were looking at, sorry. <laughs> Let's carry on. That one there, I think, is found... And it might be his mum, actually. And they're throwing mud all over themselves. And look here, you're wondering what they do with their trunks. Well, at the moment, they are throwing mud on themselves. You can see they love to throw mud on themselves with their trunks. It makes them feel happy. I think it looks like a lot of fun. But also... Oh, look at this. Also, they do things like drink through their trunks. They make a noise through their trunks. They make a sort of trumpeting sound through their trunks. They use their trunks to break leaves and branches and grass. So they use them to feed or to eat. A trunk is the most important part of an elephant. Oh, they're just having the best time. And I think, can you see that cow who just shook her head there at them? I think she's saying, come on, kids, it's time to get out the water now. And I don't think they care. They just want to play. They're having the best time. <laughs> Kareen. You ask a very interesting question about why elephants flap their ears. Now, I mean, elephants flap their ears for a number of reasons, Kareen. And at the moment, they're flapping their ears just for fun. They're in the water, they're flapping their ears, it's what they do. It's like you splashing around in the water when you're having fun, or perhaps even in the bath. And that's what's going on here. But their ears are actually very important to help them keep cool. And what happens is that a lot of blood is pumped through those ears. All of the blood in the elephant's body will be pumped through the ears in about 20 minutes. And because they flap those ears, that blood gets nice and cool, and then it goes into the brain, which is a very important part of the elephant. And an elephant must have a cool brain, otherwise the body doesn't work quite as well. And you know, if you, if you get hot, if any of us get hot, the most important part of our bodies to keep cool is our brains. And that's why an elephant flaps its ears. I hope that's clear to you. If it's a little bit unclear, just let me know and I'll explain it again. Look at this. They're having such fun. It's so nice to see an elephants having fun. They've been spending, and as I said to you, they've spent the whole day eating and doing as they're told, not too much playing while their mum and dad are eating or while their mothers and aunts are eating. And now suddenly they've come to the water in the afternoon and they can have a nice play. <laughs> and eventually the leader of the herd, who will be the biggest and oldest cow, she's going to shout at them and she's going to say, Get out, we're leaving. Come on. And then they'll all have to get out and move. Because they don't want to make their matriarch, that's what we call her. She's the oldest, most senior female. We don't want to make her upset. All right, well, as they leave here, everybody, we are going to hand you over to my friend Brent, who, if you 